All right, time for another project. And this is one that I have never done before. And so we'll see how things go. Uh, we're gonna try to do a AC recharge. So when we first got the coach, the air conditioning blew cold and was great. And first uh, summer we were driving it, we got nice cold air out the vents and it was really nice. Over the winter to the second summer, it stopped working. So we started it up uh, first thing on the second summer and just warm air from the vents. And now for the last two years, basically, we've had no air conditioning from the vents. And it gets pretty hot in there, especially if you're driving in warm temperatures. And so it would be really nice to get the air conditioning working again. So I'm gonna try to do this myself and see how it goes. I may have to consult a professional if it doesn't go well. But what I did is I got a kit on eBay, and I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Um, the kit is designed for either a R12 system or an R134A system. And I think originally these coaches were R12, and that's kind of what I assumed this system was. But when I started looking at it, I now think that it's a R134A system because looking at these uh, hoses and connections and things, they look pretty original. They're kind of rusted and, and things. I don't see any leaks at any of the connections that I can see. So I'm hopeful that there isn't a, a serious leak. But when I look at the connections here, they are a quick connect type of connection, which is a R134A style of connection. And so I think that's probably what I have. The kit came with this adapter to plug into a uh, R12 system and the adapter doesn't fit. And in fact, if I take the, the cap off, the adapter looks very much like the fitting that there's already on the coach. So I think I, maybe these fittings can be changed or something, but it looks like this has already been set up or converted to a, a 134A type of system. So. That makes it good that I got a, a kit that would work either way. So I'll talk a little bit about what I got. And I'll put the fitting away here. The kit came with some written instructions that are okay. Uh, not super detailed, but I've watched some other videos and, and things. And so I think I've got a pretty good idea of how to, how to make this work. Uh, I have heard some good things about a type of refrigerant called Duracool, I think. Um, but when I was looking for that, I didn't really uh, find it. And it was kind of hard to tell if it was for a R12 system or R134 or both. And so I ended up going with this one that seemed to be universal. Now, universal, not necessarily a good thing, <laughs> but Considering my, my lack of expertise in this, I thought it was, uh, it was worth a shot. Now, it says R134A replacement refrigerant with stop leak. I wanted the stop leak because obviously the, cool, the refrigerant came out somehow. So I'm hoping it's just a, a very small leak that'll, that'll stop with this stop leak. Um, it says in the paperwork that came with this that it is not a 134A type of refrigerant. It's also not a R12 refrigerant. It's apparently some other type of hydrocarbon refrigerant um, and it's called EnviroSafe. So uh, hopefully it's, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit more friendly than the other options. Um, but the paperwork says that it should work with both and there were lots of good reviews on this particular brand and this type of, of uh, refrigerant. So uh, I'm gonna hope that the reviews are accurate and hope that it works for me. So. Gonna, gonna put lots of hope into this project. So the steps, and I'm going to describe it a little bit to get started here, and then I'm gonna start the engine and you probably won't be able to hear anything, so we'll see how it goes. But um, the steps are to hook up one of these cans to this uh, handy little, little hose adapter that it came with. So one end attaches to the can, the other hand has this quick connect that attaches to the connector on the the AC system. Uh, it has a nice little gauge on it that shows your pressure. Uh, doing a little research, it looks like I should probably end up somewhere above 25 PSI in, in pressure, um, up to maybe 45 on the high end. Um, 
but this can threads on to this fitting and you want that nice and tight and then when I screw this in it will puncture the can and then I screw it out a little bit and it will start sending the refrigerant through the, the fitting into the system. And you're apparently supposed to hold the can upside down while you do that and have the engine running. So I'll want to basically get the engine running, connect this up. Um, I'll want to kind of see what the pressure is when the engine is running, just kind of idling away, uh, maybe a little bit over an idle, um, and see what the pressure is. I, I do know that when I turn on the air conditioning now, the compressor doesn't come on or anything. And so uh, the compressor has a low pressure switch, and so it shouldn't come on if the pressure is too low. So I'll kind of take a look at that. If it turns out the pressure is okay and it's not a refrigerant problem, then I'll go down the path of, of looking for an electrical problem or something else. Um, but I suspect that there's just a slow leak and, and the refrigerant has, has leaked out over time. So I will start it up, I'll connect this up, I'll check the pressures, and then if the pressures look okay, I'll basically puncture the can and start filling this refrigerant. Now, this says that it's equivalent to 21 ounces of 134A. I know that the R12 capacity of this system is about 60 ounces. If it were totally empty, it's probably not totally empty. And I don't know what the capacity is for 134A because that's not original. So I'm going to just rely basically on the pressures and try not to, to get the pressures too high um, as I'm filling it up. So I think that's the plan. I'm going to give it a shot and we'll see what happens. And uh, we'll do video of the, the pressures and things like that. And I might do some voiceover afterward or a little recap at the end to kind of let you know how it turns out. All right, so we've got the uh, engine started up. It's idling. Apparently you're supposed to have it running at about 1,000 RPMs. I don't have a uh, tack, so I don't know what our RPMs are, but it's probably close to that, maybe 800. Um, I'm connected here. And I'm showing about 5 PSI, so yeah, sure enough, we're low on pressure. And so, uh, and I can kind of see the compressor back in here. Uh, I'm sure you are not going to be able to see it on video, um, but it's not spinning. And so I'm going to turn the, uh, the can upside down and uh, start putting in the pressure, and we're going to see if we get up to 25 here if that compressor kicks on. So, going to try puncturing the can, and then go from there. I don't know why the pressure has gone up so quickly. It seems to be going up basically just as I open this valve a little bit here after puncturing the can. I don't really know what the pressure in the system is. And the compressor is not turning. So we're just gonna let it sit here for a little bit and see what happens. See if the compressor kicks on. Oh, hey, the compressor just kicked on. Okay, so the compressor is on and the pressure went down. So I think I can keep opening this up and letting the refrigerant go in and kind of watch that pressure as the compressor cycles. And we're just gonna let it go for a while. Ultimately, I want the pressure to be probably up around 40 PSI. In the paperwork it said somewhere between 30 and 45. Um, so I want it to be kind of probably in the middle of that range. I don't know if I want it to be really on one end or the other. Interestingly the uh, the can is getting kind of cold which probably means that the refrigerant is coming out of the can. And the nozzle is getting a little cold and the hose and the fittings are pretty cold. So probably uh, things are working as intended here, I think. The compressor is running. I 
You know, it just dropped down quite a bit there. Dropping down below 25 PSI. The compressor is still turning though, so I think that's a good sign. This can is much lighter than it was. I think maybe the can is, could be empty. All right. So I think I'm going to disconnect and try the second can. All right, so uh, the other can was empty and I, I took it off, nothing came out, so uh, it, was, it was done. I went in and checked the vents, and even though our pressure is on the low side, the compressor is running, and I was getting cool air from the vents. I'm also feeling uh, some of the lines here, like the line I'm going into, is, uh, is kind of cold. So I think things are, are working as intended. I'm going to now puncture this next can. and see if we can continue the process. And ultimately I want that pressure to kind of end up at about 40 pounds. So I'm just gonna kind of slowly let it go until it seems to be hanging out at around that, that pressure. And this, uh, this hose and fitting and can are getting cold again, just like the other one as the, the coolant was going out. I guess refrigerant. And the can is definitely uh, a little lighter than it was a minute ago. I think I'm going to turn off the valve here and see what our, our reading is. All right, looks like it's showing about 35. So I'm guessing that's probably the pressure in the system if I was not filling it right now. So open this back up and keep filling. Okay, and the can is feeling feeling pretty empty now. I'm gonna close the valve and see what we're looking at. Oh yeah, still about 35. So I may be a little bit on the low side. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to make sure I'm getting everything out. Oh yeah, I think that's it. Because it's dropping down to where it is when I have the valve closed. Okay. So it looks like we, after two cans, are at about 35. So I'm going to disconnect this and go inside and check uh, temperature at the vents. All right. So I put in two cans all together. Uh, pressure ended up a little bit low at about 35 pounds. My goal was to be at 40 or 45 pounds. Um, so we're a little bit on the low side, it looks like. Uh, I think I can get some more of this refrigerant and, and top it off a little more. Um, interestingly, it's working great. So um, I don't have the fan on high or on max here because uh, I just found out that apparently my high fan is not working. So another thing to put on the list, but the AC is on normal, cold, 
the fan is running, and we're getting really cold air out of the vents here. Um, I probably could measure the temperature of this. It's not going to be as cold as it could be, I think, if the, if the pressure was where it should be. A uh, huge improvement over where we've been for the last year and a half. So good things it means the compressor is working. There doesn't seem to be an electrical problem. There could still be a leak. So I hope that the fact that I used a refrigerant with stop leak that uh, it will take care of maybe a, a really minor small leak and maybe it will stay charged for a while, but we're gonna to have to kind of monitor it a little bit and, and see how it does. But for now, boy, I'm looking forward to the next hot day that I need to drive on because this is gonna be much nicer than it's been driving in any kind of warm weather lately. So I'll put a link in the description to the kit that I used. Uh, I think your mileage may vary, right? Because there's apparently been some conversions or changes to, to our coach. So you may have to go down a little different path depending on if yours is original or who knows what other kind of uh, changes or work's been done. Um, but working dash AC is a big upgrade.